Welcome with us, folks. Tonight, we are trying to find ways to polish our crystal ball. The way we do this is with a little bit of traders' psychology and our own psychology in order to determine what a ticker can do, and in this particular case, after earnings. So I'll take two examples for this, and the first one is here on Apple. Um, the idea is to see, um, you all see this, this big drop on Apple was after earnings, but the idea is to see what was the sentiment before going to earnings and what is the sentiment afterwards. So look at this one hour chart. I'll draw a few things here. If you look at full week, I mean, the, the week starts here till this Friday. And we were coming from basically bottom, maybe a little higher bottoms from Tuesday to Wednesday on the previous week. And then we started the ramp up towards earnings that were on Thursday, uh, last Thursday. So the idea is this. Sorry about this. Uh, the idea is this, um, if earnings were so bad here, they would drop below what we had as previous support that we had only a week ago, right? These people that decided to buy at the bottom prior to earnings, if they were really unsatisfied, they would have dumped everything when they reached that level now this you have to see this folks because this is really important i'm not talking about years ago i'm talking about only days ago right so again i'm going at it again these people bought pre-earnings a week and so ago let's say 10 days ahead of earnings saying hmm this looks like a good bottom triple bottom all a little higher and they're buying pre-earnings and we see momentum is going up up to a certain line certain line here that we'll see just in a second but this line is not breaking for a reason and on the last day just before earnings we broke the line up to a point and after earnings we dropped to a certain other line which is you know close to here so you're looking at something that was not so good earnings, disappointing, call it what you were, what you wish. However, we are not dumping lower than what these guys were buying. So if you bought the triple bottom thinking, oh, this is a nice entry, where will be where will it be? Well, where will be your stop? Your stop will be if you drop below that triple bottom, right? So even after those of earnings, we are still ways above that low. So it tells you we still have a bit of strength in that ticker. Now let's move out of the, of the uh, uh, one hour and move to the one minute, uh, sorry, uh, five minute, just to show you, right? We were at a level we're on the five minute here this is pretty much where we stop moving to the upside uh, a few days before earnings and then it popped above it and then after earnings it dropped to a certain line and then this is the uh, after hours and pre-market activity on friday and then we are not dropping below this line See this? We're not dropping. Even at the at the gate, um, right at the gate, it came down to a line, and it's a line of support. So basically, if people that bought that triple bottom we just showed you wanted out, they would have sold already. And if people that are were on the way up that bought that were that are currently bag holders wanted to get out they would have sold already so the idea is thinking the psychology behind this play is hmm we're still higher than we were a week ago although people are not too satisfied with these earnings 
So let's see what it does at the gate because sometimes it will be, um, you know, there's a big drop and then oh, we will start uh, dripping even more. You saw this, um, I believe Twitter did something like that. Basically, uh, it was kind of hovering close to the support. This is, this is resistance here. It could have been close to this line and then, you know, it started drifting afterwards. So what I'm saying is you wait for the, for the bell and you saw that, let me get this even bigger now so you can see it clearly. You saw at the gate that it started coming down. You know, there was volume going up because people saw the same thing. As long as we're not crossing this, I would not touch it, touch it, right? So this would happen right at the gate. We're not crossing this high of this was um, post earnings in the after hours trading session. And then we came down to no lower than this. So we're still on support. So this range is telling you that it's probably going to break either to the upside or the downside. So because it's just trading in a very tight range, it's kind of telling you it's 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 calling the bulls come and help us out because the downside pressure is pretty low. See, volume is dropping and the ticker is still flat. As soon as oh we get just a little bit of volume and we didn't get that much. See? Just a tiny little bit. Whoop, it starts pumping and it gets to a certain line to a certain line there. Why is this line there? I mean, you'll think support resistance. You're absolutely right. Look at this line. I'll, I'll put the 149.91, right? Let's go to day chart on this, right? This is June of this year, we're ramping up to what? This line. Again, this line. Got a bit above it, still acting as support, right? And then just before this week, earnings, what happened? We're not crossing the 149.91, right? Let's move back to the five minute chart. Uh, the, the Sorry, the one hour chart. See, it's the same line. I didn't touch it. 149, 91, this line here. See, guys? And what happened intraday? We got some bulls showed up. And to where? This is where we, we ended the um, after hours session. So, you know, close enough support resistance we met we went all the way up to resistance now this is apple i'll show you the same thing using amazon now this is the amazon chart let's talk about not the earnings that happened on thursday night but the previous ones you all recall this huge dump after earnings right there this was due to uh, disappointment on many things but guidance was pretty low as well so expectations for the next earnings pretty low so people jumped ship I mean we're talking about a ticker that was close to 3600 that opened up in a 3300 so this was a pretty significant dump right and if you look at support and resistance, yes, I'm still talking about support and resistance. Look at this line here, right? We are dropping below. And, you know, if you were to think that we were at least we could have tried to get back to this line on the way up, 
but barely, and then we rejected this line, which was the old support. So basically, we jumped and we dumped under support, which could have been kind of here, right? But no, we're in between, very close to that. But you know, support rejected this old resistance, and now it rejected it. So this was clearly bearish. Why? We are entering a an old support zone, which is you know the, this old resistance. This is where we came to. When it moved to the upside, it moved to the old support here, rejected it, and then it came down lower. Trust me on this one, we're pretty close to this support now for the bottom. This is where it picked up and it started moving to the upside. So analyzing after earnings, you see that you know, we're down on support. There's very little move to the upside and then it started being bearish afterwards. So this was a bearish earnings with bearish rendering afterwards. Now let's get back to um, what happened on the um, last earnings and let's move to the one hour chart to tell, to show you what happened. Um, same thing that we just did with Apple look at what happened on the earnings still not so great right when you look at the the end result you're talking about something that was um just before earnings something that something that went to 34.79 and then it dumped to this wick here in 32.5 area which is you know a good 200 dollars not as significant as the other one that had a $300 drop, but still not so great. However, you saw that Amazon had a similar activity prior to earnings. Look at this here. We have on the hour chart, buyers from the bottom had a double bottom and then we saw a rise towards earnings that were only about like 10 or 12 days ago where we saw a rise from a double bottom pick. So you have people here buying this bottom and you have other people here buying this bottom and you know, more so around this area on Monday, which is only a week ago. So buying the bottom and then we got earnings earnings that we knew weren't going to be that great because of bad guidance on the previous earnings that we just saw and again disappointment disappointing earnings and we see a big dump on earnings however where do we dump same thing look for support and resistance we are dumping in this area right this is the wick people that bought the bottom um, two weeks ago, right? This is Monday and Wednesday, two weeks ago. And then there's price action. See here, this is as high as it goes on this drop, high as it goes, gets rejected. However, oh, it's holding, it's holding this line, right? So it gets really, really tight on a situation that only happened a week ago. People that bought this level and people that bought this level are still very happy about the turnout of their position. So psychologically behind this play, what, what is it telling you? We just saw on the previous earnings that it was a all out sale. People didn't want to stay in and you had to look at days and days and days before and like weeks before to see previous support. However, in this particular case, we're only looking at a few days back. It's not even a week ago. We were at this level. Yes, there's a big dump, but not significant because we're still higher than these folks. And... The idea is if you were buying here, where would you put your stop loss if we dumped under, right? Well, it's holding. 
So what is it telling you? People are not that disappointed, not this, that disappointed in the, in, in the show here. And let's move out of here, zoom in a little bit, and play with these guys a little. See? I'm going to blow it up, and I'm. the idea is to show you here, these buyers, right? Level of buyers, we're here. Okay? Let's put this on the five minute so we can all play the, the, um, the open. Five minute is showing you what happened in the open, right? We get this big dump aftermarket and this is a price action. We get the dump, obviously there's a wick after hours. Where does it go to the level we just showed you before? It's a resistance. And it came down to a level right here. So this creates a range. A range that I like to play as a guide for the open. Telling me all these guys that managed to play after earnings on the after hour um, session or on the pre-market session. Well, you know. Um, usually they're people that know what they're doing and I tend to think that if we get above this uh, we get on the bullish side and if we get under that well we get on the bearish side so look at what happened at the open this is the open here we dumped obviously if you had played this and it's after hours some um, some of these stop losses will get triggered if you are not able to play this after hours. So basically there are a few um, positions that are triggered selling at the, at the gate, but this line here still holding. So basically people that bought the bottom at the pre-market session still showed up right here. So it's not flushing, no, it's still holding right there. Here at the top, oh, no, we do not have anyone wanting to get above that, which I believe was 33, 35-ish, we're very close to that. Now, let's move even closer to see what happened. Let's move even closer here. So same thing here. Traders, psychology, we're not crossing this line and we're not crossing this line either so we're be between a channel you would expect that you know we could have gone and through this range here flush under if we get bearish or move above if we get bullish but it didn't nope instead it coiled just like a spring would coil up inside a very tight range it got sold, but right away, somebody decided to buy it back to a certain point right there. And this is pretty much where I decided to say that we, we had a crystal ball call saying that this looked to me that we were going to in the right direction and the on the upside direction. And for all the reasons that I mentioned before regarding the trader's psychology, even if we had not so good earnings, all these guys I've bought since Monday, they're still in. If they wanted to get out, they would have sold already, right? We're at the same level they were. We're buying this bottom completely out of the money. The idea is to get a move to the upside. So as soon as we get past this line, it's not going to test it and flush. No, we're, we're into buyer's territory. And this is what happened, right? As soon as we moved towards um, the right direction, see this volume is cranking up. And yes, we moved all the way to the next resistance, which managed to be a pretty good play to the upside. But the idea is not for, for, for us to look at the, the play itself, but the trader's psychology. Looking back, you have a few things. We played the Apple, uh, we, we talked about the Apple and now we're talking about the Amazon. You look, where is the support? Where are we dropping to? 
right? After earnings, are we dropping on support, below support? How far is that support? And who are the bag holders? Are they bag holders from a week ago or bag holders from months ago? All this, in this particular case, Apple and Amazon, we were above a line where traders were there only for a week, since a week. They bought a week ago and now they're still above, we're still above their entry price. Now this tells you that everyone's happy with the turnout in the end, right? Even if we dumped after earnings, everyone's happy with the turnout. So things to look for are, make sure to look for how far, how long ago, did we have um, bag holders to above or below that support? In this particular case, we were above in both Amazon and Apple. So this wraps it up for this crystal ball trying to polish, making a way into a bullish move after a bad earning um, session on both Amazon and Apple, but things to look for for you um, regarding how close the support and resistance, in this particular case, we use the, the uh, support lines. So I hope this makes it a little more easier for you to analyze the trader psychology behind the play. Let me know what you think and have a good one, folks. Thanks for watching.